Welcome to the podcast where we take a deep dive into the stories behind construction business leaders. We will share how they got started, how they found success, and the lessons learned along the way. I'm your host, Eric Fortenberry. Welcome to Builder Stories. Welcome back, everybody. I am very excited. Today, I've got a special guest. I've got Amzie Lehman from Lehman Construction, and he is located in Ship Shawana, Indiana. Did I get that right, Amzie? Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, we are uh, excited to have you on Builder Stories. Welcome. Hey, it's good to be here. Yeah. So why don't you, uh, you know, kind of give us give us a little bit of an introduction, a little background. You know, what do you do? How did you get into construction? All of that type of uh, type of information. Sure. I'd be happy to. So like most contractors, I started out on the job site and my dad started the company 30 plus years ago. And one day he said, well, why am I working for somebody else? I can do this myself. And so in 2012 is when my brother and brother-in-law officially bought the company. So we're a partnership. And he went off to Kentucky. There was a full scale Noah's Ark. We had the opportunity to be part of to help raise the, raise the timbers on that. So he led that, but um, yeah, so I'm, uh, what do, is that enough summary? Yeah. Okay. What, I mean, what, what kind of work, uh, what kind of work are you doing? Sure. Perfect. Uh, we do new homes primarily is what we're focusing on. So we've done lots of different stuff from commercial to, uh, to pull barns, but primarily new homes where we bring the client in, we design it. And one interesting thing we're working on, and that is, is I'm focusing on the client experience. And if you look at somebody who's buying a new home, the first thing they do is they talk to a realtor. And so I'm learning to focus more on building relationships with realtors. And the, the first thing they need is land and finding a lot of land and um, drawing that picture. And we can get into that more a little bit later too. But um, that's primarily what we do is to lead and guide the clients and um, show them what the next step looks like. And um, I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. So you, you said it was you and uh, your, your, your brother? running the business? Right. So in the leadership, it's a partnership close to equal, but my brother-in-law is actually the majority partner. And talking about roles, he said, I want to be a carpenter in my own corner. I might be majority owner, but you guys run it. Have at. <laughs> and so I'm the CEO, but really it's, it used to be one for all, all for one, but then we've hired many different coaches and guides over the years. And we I uh, have more dedicated roles now where I'm more the CEO where I am over a sales and marketing and my brother is over the build team out in the field and he's very good at that. And um, then the administration part of it, which is job tread, I absolutely just love it. I just say thank you for what you've done there. I've I've done my own Excel sheets and developed my own estimating formats or my estimating templates there, but um, job tread killed all that. Now I can scale with it so that's awesome so what well, kind of maybe a little bit more breakdown what's what's the rest of the the team look like uh you know do, do you have you know project managers i mean you said you got the and the back office what's the full structure sure uh so the the operational portion parts of it so i'm over sales and marketing and then i have one gal that's working remote that's helping with, with marketing and then we have a client liaison and that's just uh, primarily because we have the opportunity to have a great guy. And so we, we can structure the company, tweak it, so make it work. So, um, so we have a client liaison who's very good working with clients. And then my brother is leading the build team as far as the project manager. And then we have two crew leaders. And if we have our own uh, framing crews, we have a lot more control of the quality. And there's eye, our eyes are in the field and we have a lot better control of the quality and the, the sub that show up, it's more, it's easier to manage that less, less liability, which is what you definitely have to work about, uh, worry about in const uh, construction. And then as far as the administration portion of it, uh, that is very minimal and primarily because um, job trade makes it so nice. If you get a bid in it, um, you just click uh, convert and then there you have a purchase order or a vendor order which is basically you get a bid you should convert it say yep you're going to do this work once they do that work you click click a button and in a second you got a bill throw the attachment in here's a fun little story 
So August 1st, my statement came at like 3 a.m. This is because of job trade, making it so easy for them. Um, literally in 30 seconds while at the gym, I looked at the statement, clicked it over in QuickBooks Online, and reconciled it in seconds. It's awesome. And that's not always the case. I've spent days, if not weeks, trying to get it all figured out. But job trade makes it easy. <laughs> now, that was at 3 a.m., you said? Uh, the statement came at 3 a.m. At 6 a.m., um, <laughs> I, I got it like at 6, 6 a.m. and 30 seconds. I was going to say, I mean, uh, you, you, you must not sleep if you're up at 3 a.m. That's, that's a later night stay up. <laughs> well, I have done those, but uh, not very. that's not scalable. Yeah, sure. So it sounds like you've got a mix of, of kind of uh, your own crews, and, and I can imagine with your brother being carpenter, you know, one to, to kind of have some of those, those employees, but then you've also got a bunch of, of trade partners, subcontractors that you're using. Right. Right. Yep. I didn't realize how many people were leading and guiding until I looked at my certificate, uh, certificate of insurance audit, and realized 67 different people. Number one, I should streamline this a little bit more and only use primary trades. <laughs> uh, but I did a quick math. If each one of those has three employees, we're guiding and leading hundreds of teams and affecting lots of families internally, outside, and then also about, say, 30 or so clients or, well, we're shooting for about 10 homes, which is about 3 million in sales a year. So the other fun, fun portion, which this came from my coach, is if I look at the revenue responsibility per hour, so 3 million, which is pretty simple. If you work 40 hours a week for 50 weeks, we're rounding it off. You got 2,000 hours in a year. So 3 million divided by 2,000, you know the math, it's $1,500 an hour. And so that gives me a good re reminder of the importance that everything we do every hour, there's $1,500 that we're responsible to guide and direct. But more importantly, how much of that is can we keep? Yeah. Or the, the top line revenue. But. Yeah, that's, that's great. Great point. Um, you know, it, you said earlier that you, you found that, you know, working with realtors, I mean, is that where, you know, your, the majority of your leads are coming from and, you know, how, how, how are you finding, you know, new, new customers and kind of tell us a little bit about what that, you know, what does that sales process look like for you? Sure. So I'm, um, let me think of a project. So I'm thinking of a project my client liaison is actually right there meeting with him now to do the final, uh, like the final, final walkthrough. Actually, we gave him a thousand dollar check back of, of uh, money that they saved. And they were expecting some more. But anyways, so they came originally, um, they did a Google search, they found us, and then they had to work with a realtor to find the land. So we either partnered with a realtor um, like intentionally, or then the client, in this case, the client did directly, but there was definitely a realtor involved and they found the, found the land. And then they came to us and I'm not sure, did they, um, let me refresh myself. So the process looked like they, th okay. The reason they found us is she was looking for land options and on my marketing, this is a key point. My marketing is more educational marketing focus. And so she said, how do I buy real estate or what do I have to watch for? So, and actually I would welcome anybody to go to my website, laymanconstruction.com and, and you can download the same report. And, um, and just to that point, there's an abundance mindset and is what I like to focus on is that there's way more homes in, in the world than I can build. And I, I'm, I love collaborating and working with other contractors. And as I say, a rising tide lifts all boats. Um, one of my favorite quotes, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but the, the guy who actually built my website, he was a marketing, he won marketer of the year out of like 40,000 marketing people, but then he actually sold it and was working with his, uh, neighbor and friend. And so they had their own website, um, that they built over the years. And then he, which he has the same abundance mindset. So he basically duplicated that website and put my information on it and the reports and everything. And, and I love it. And so he's also a, a good friend that I talk to quite often. So that's awesome. I mean, I, I love your, your, your thinking around this abundance mindset. I mean, there, there is so much demand and there's not enough supply. And 
you know, when you see all these contractors singing that they got to, you know, be, be uber competitive and that they can't talk to the other competition. It's like, man, I've, I've heard so many stories of people working with the competitors in the area and like they end up finding out like, oh, you know, this guy, he really prefers these jobs. I actually don't like those types of jobs. You know, we, we actually now refer each other, you know, business back and forth. And it's like, man, that's such a better way to think about it is that, I mean, there, there, there is an abundance of opportunities and it's just about figuring out like, what are the right opportunities for you and making sure you're getting in front of those. And then, you know, when you have an opportunity to, to, to help someone out, you might be able to reciprocate in the future. You know, that's, that's such a better approach than, uh, you know, just, just not being able to help the, help the customer at all. And just kind of giving them no answer, no help. I mean, you might as well refer them out, you know, at least, at least be a resource, right? You know, a, a funny story about that abundance mindset. So, I have got three children. Actually, I'm expecting twins here this fall. But oh, wow. Congrats. Thank you. So what I did is I had to read them stories. And so I went and took the abundance and thought, how can I make this more interesting? So I used a chat GPT in, in which I like a vision, vision traction organizer. So it's my fifth core value is abundance. We have a forward facing culture of respect and abundance. So the key is forward facing. So I took that into chat and said, write a children's story to teach my kids this lesson. Nice. <laughs> and it was interesting. How do I take something which we're dealing with millions of dollars and break it down to a simple story that kids can understand? And if in turn, it forced me to uh, be more creative and to simplify it and make it more interesting and understand it better myself. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, you you also talked about, you know, kind of providing the the client you know, experience and, and really making it a great experience. I mean, can you, can you tell us a little bit more about that? And, you know, what, what do you do that you think is, is really kind of elevating that experience that, you know, that, 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 that hopefully is ultimately, you know, motivating that, that, that client to want to work directly with you and choose you to, to build their home. Absolutely. So the biggest lesson I've learned that is marketing is so much more than running an ad. And my marketing person, so we got into it and you dig, dig back and dig back. And we were talking about like how the crew is motivated out on the job site to give the client a better experience. Um, so I don't know, are you familiar with EOS, but the whole concept of to make the client a better experience, there's two main focus. One is internally. I get to focus on, on me. Where do I want to go? Where's my heart? I love building and designing custom homes. That makes, if I am in tune with that, then I'm going to give the client a better experience. And then the next portion of that is the, the clients to use language that they uh, use language and terms that the client uses because they don't use detailed construction language. And um, they use just common everyday language like, um, well, I had a Christmas party and I invited a lot of my good clients there. And so I had a painter there with, he was a ventriloquist and he did a nice painting and, and so forth. And then to give the painting, uh, to do like a little drawing, I said, well, let's, let's make the best of this. And so I said, in your own words, what does layman construction do? Because that's where most of business happens is somebody at a social event. I heard your building. Who'd you get? And, um, they say layman construction. And it was interesting to see the words that they use. It's like they, Build nice houses. Are they finished it? Are they listened and followed up promptly? Or just simple language? But you gotta you gotta talk to the client and ask them and to, uh, not come with a preset my, um, with a solution, but more listen. What's your problem? What are you looking for? And obviously, part of that you have to narrow your funnel down and make sure you're in the front of the right clients. Uh, but then help them craft their dreams into reality. Um, several, several different stories I'm thinking about is, is that instead of the old marketing, old me would have been, Hey, how great layman is layman construction. We're awesome. We're the best. But now I flip it around and I had a client call me a Friday afternoon and he said, I want to build, I want to get on your schedule. And so you can quickly, um, open the gate and there's no filter that it forms. You just say, all right, come on in because he's local, he's got land and ready to go. So. So the first thing I did was uh, we'll pull it up on on um, Google Earth. So this field right here, 
And so I, which I, I'm good enough at chief architect design software that I just do it in real time, but you can also just print it out. And then I talked about, instead of talking about me and I've made that mistake in the past. So I said, do you want to know how great I am? Of course they don't, they don't care about anybody. They care about their project. And so that's what we got to be in tune with. And so um, I talked about the field there and talked about how it will feel like coming into the driveway, the experience of driving up and parking there. And you're going to live on, on this side of the, uh, it's a duplex and your son's going to live on the other side. And you want to, the back porch, and you want to look back towards the river where you had all the memories as, as kids and you kept that portion of it. And that's the language you use. And that was a good lesson for me to realize in the past, the old me would have said, um, for example, a window. The customer said, what if we put a window there? The old contractor on the tools me would have said, yeah, well, what's the rough opening going to be? Is it going to be this technical detail, that technical detail? Well, now you need that, but you have to go forward to the sales portion of it and put it to client language and say, what will it feel like to sit inside here with your family and look out the view that we do? That's what they're after. And then you have to, um, that's the sales portion, but then you have to fill out the details and get all those custom technical details, glass, um, rough opening sizes and everything for the build team to make it so it's a good experience. But you have to use client language. So, yeah. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll just kind of looking at your website, I'll say it, it really does. It feels like you're, you know, you're, you're really appealing to them. I mean, you know, it's, you know, the headliner, you know, you can live in your dream home, you know, and like seeing how, like, you, you know, you, you immediately kind of go into, you know, the, 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 you know, clear communication, you're going to provide them expert guidance. You're using innovation and technology driven, dependable quality, you know, of, of, of attention to detail. Like, you know, it does, it feels like you're really like appealing to their needs and to, and to making them feel like working with you is going to be a great experience. And, and I think that really like, that's, that's so important. I mean, you know, it says, you know, we don't just care about homes. We care about you. You know, you, you've done a great job really appealing, you know, to their, to, to their emotional, their, their psychological, you know, needs that, that they want to have a contractor that they can trust and that they know is going to, is, is going to care about them, not just, you know, getting, getting the most money out of this or just, just caring about the build. Like you, you know, you, you really do come across on your website. And I think that's so important. I mean, you've, you've, you've mentioned it multiple times, the importance of, you know, marketing in, in your website. And I find that a lot of contractors, they don't, they don't invest the time and the money that it takes to build a very great, you know, representation of themselves on the web. But that is like, that is your, 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 your customer face. Like that, that, that's your forward facing you know, a, a aspect of the company that is very often the the very first impression that they're going to get of you. And, you know, some people just, I don't know, it's, it's like an afterthought. Like they just don't think that they need marketing or, or that they're getting all their customers from referrals. And it's like, man, like you have no idea what you could be getting if you just took a little bit of time to, to invest in that. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. And I've Internally, we have struggled with that concept of promoting ourselves with website. And then my uh, my good friend said, if you're providing an excellent service, which I hope you are to the client, you owe it to the client to market and make so that they can find you. It's not, um, it's a win-win where you get to have some of the profit at the end, but they get to have a lifetime of memories with their yeah. family in that home. Um, but to finish my thought with that client. So after I brought him in, we talked about that, talked about his, his home, his land driving in there. Then at about, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes in, he said, so who are you? Tell me about yourself. <laughs> and what it stood out to me is then he was interested. We were the best people in the world and he didn't know a thing about me. Because we understood him, we were able to put into words how yeah. his concerns were. We were able to put into words what he was thinking to bring that to life with um, with designs, with sketches, with conversations, um, and to paint that picture. Actually, that's another thing one of my good builder friends often talks about, and I, my team often says I preach it all the time, and that is you have to paint that picture of what the next scene looks like. It's almost like you're a director of a play or a movie, um, and a funny story. So I had a, had a client that 
they were building a, a house right beside their lot for their in-laws or their parents, her parents. And so the, they gave a de deposit and everything. And then I get a call. Amazon, you in the office. I'll be there. Um, okay. I usually, I know what that means. So he said, well, grandparents were no longer on board. They realized that, um, all their money is going to be gone. And the son was saying, we told them that we're going to buy the house in two years, but they didn't listen to it. Then they had all their money. They're not losing it. And I said, okay, that's fine. And I gave it back. And then just as a spur of the moment, I said, have you tried like drawing a picture for them? Like box, this is today's date, 2024. Your bank account balance is zero or whatever it was. 2026, your bank account balance is X amount of 100,000. And it was just a, kind of an afterthought. A week mm. later, Amzi, you in the office. I'll be there. It was all on. Said so Then I asked him, so what changed? He said, well, I mean, they did. I'm guessing there was other factors too, but they did. They drew it out, drew that picture. And we think that we're highly educated and, and sophisticated, and you have to use all the technical language. That's not what drives sales. What drives sales is working with people, um, humility and uh, to go back if, if they say oh well, yeah talking talking in their interest and yeah. and if we don't get it right to uh, say well that was a learning experience and we've <laughs> all had those <laughs> yeah i mean i i love the approach too of, of really thinking about it from like you know i'm providing education i'm i'm giving them resources i'm i'm helping them learn about the process and about what to expect and what it's going to be like and yeah, you know, I think when you when you approach it from a from an educational standpoint, again, it really helps to build that that trust and and that respect and and really that desire to keep working with you because they're learning and 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 they're gaining knowledge. You know, which which I think everyone can 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 attest to. Like you know, the the unknown can be very scary, and when you're helping them to 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 learn what this is going to be like and what you know decisions are going to have to be made and what the what the schedule and the timeline and the cost and you know everything like i think that really helps kind of ease those 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 tensions and those fears about moving forward and so you know i just again it sounds like an all-around really great approach to how you're doing your sales and marketing well thank you i'm curious I, how, how did you figure all that out? I mean, you, you've, 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 you've mentioned, you know, uh, you, you hired a coach. I mean, is that, you know, is that where you, you've gained this, this insight or is it just things you figured out along the way and kind of reflecting or, you know, what kind of, what, 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 what helped you to, to have these realizations? So the, that's a good question. And the number one thing, so my formal education is eight, eight grades, but and I was talking about this because I built the, the remodel, the renovated a home for like uh, presidents of colleges and their architect daughter. And I get in the design software and I wish we were using the same one. I just click, 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 remove it. And they were like, how do you do that? So I was talking to that about that with a, I think it was maybe even by like some, an educated guy. What he told me is that it, with curiosity, and thinking, why is that? And just a little bit of curiosity with technology. You have 90% of the world's information at your fingertips. Anything you want to know with a little bit of curiosity, um, you'll outpace colleges. And I have a great respect for education, but I don't think it stops at eighth grades or a college degree or wherever. It's continuous. And I've hired people with college degrees. And that does not mean... Um, effectiveness or turning, um, building a nice home for a client that they can live in. I would rather have somebody that has enthusiasm, a curious mindset. Um, and the other portion of that is the training portion. I think Anna, I have a great respect for her on your team there. She has a um, degree in, in education, I believe, or I'm not sure what it is. But I learned the hard way of, I thought, well, if you want to teach somebody something, just here are the steps, A, B, or C, give it to them, and it'll be done. Not working. And <laughs> for even for myself, which is one of my coaches had to do is, why do you want to do that? And that leads into my other tool that I use is a simple, simple, um, I don't know if I have one here right, right now. Everything that I organized and most of what I did, 
you see these little sticky notes? Yep. You say it's the technical term, I believe is called affinity diagram, which in I think like Dale Carnegie leadership training for management, I, I learned a long time ago. But just yesterday, figuring out a selection and a complicated mess is, um, well, what's the first step? And then you start moving stuff around, grouping it together, giving it headers, giving it labels. And that's how I organized everything, including my budget, my schedule, my marketing, the mapping out the client journey. What's the first thing? Well, at the end, if, what do I want at the end? Once this is all done, gone. And just yesterday I had a, um, I, I got to figure out your own why. I had my young son turn five and I brought him with me to work. He wanted to come with me to work. So we, after we went out for pizza and went a little putt, putt, uh, mini golf. And then on the way back beside the street, there was a little monkey. And do I realize my why is so much bigger than construction. That's just spending time with my son. I take it for granted too much, but that's my why. But rule number one of marketing, and actually this, this comes from a, a great coach. I think you've done a done an interview with him as well. But um, rule number one is we are not our own client. I don't know by default what my clients want. I got to talk to them. I got to listen to them. And which I use the entrepreneur operating system. I don't know if you can see this or not, but I just did it for my own, own version. So this is like a fishing boat. So that's my why. I want to be on the boat fishing. But when you go fishing... You don't put food on in the hope that I like. You got to figure out who are the the client. Well, in this case, the the fish doesn't have a very good ending, but our clients have a happy lifetime of ending living their dream home. So it starts with a vision. Or if you're familiar with EOS, you got to have the know where you're going, know where you came from, and, and that marketing piece is all part of that vision. Um, yeah. Then you got to have the right people, the right seat, and got to have your dashboard. Like you wouldn't drive a Go on an airplane ride if they say, Hey, it's going great, but I don't know how where we're going. I don't know how much fuel we have or how far it is to get there. You never do that, but you got to have that open it. So, anyway, yes. what's your next question? No, I mean, it, it sounds like you've, you've really you've spent a lot of time kind of process mapping and you know, kind of figuring out how you know to, to implement you know, workflows that you know that are going to work for you, but also for the client. You know, uh, you, you mentioned kind of you know, budget, you know how to structure the budget, structuring the, the schedules. I mean, you know, is, is there anything that, you know, you'd like to share that, that maybe you've learned over the years that, you know, when you first started trying to, to, to manage a build versus, you know, the, the builds that you're doing today, I mean, what, what might some of those differences be? Um, sure. So the, the tools that I like is while I am, well, I love technology and everything you've built there, the simple, as simple as you can keep it, the better. Um, simple processes is the goal. So, every, and so the two main, well, if I simplified it down, so and I'd be happy to share this as well. This is my six steps of the EOS process. And the last one is there. I don't know if you can see it. It's called traction. The book's called traction. And the, if you imagine a truck getting unstuck and you're starting to take off. So that's, I imagine I've, well, imagine a lot of people feel that at times their company's stuck. There's got to be something better. That's the whole focus of that entrepreneur operating system yeah. process. Excuse me. Um, the next one that I use, so there's the the EOS 6 is what I call it. Um, then I use the, the four-step schedule process. So the first one is like a no-obligation consultation. So, hey, if you want to, somebody like it's, Actually, just today, I talked with somebody. If you know anybody, if you want to build or talking with a friend, just... <clears throat> you might have been talking too much. My throat's dry. Hang on a sec. <clears throat> so the first step in the construction process of the client journey is that consultation. So I look at it totally from a client's perspective is, no obligation. Hey, let's just talk. Maybe we're the right company for you. We'll provide helpful information. Um, then the next step is the uh, design and budget. You got to figure out what you want to build and uh, and design it and get the dollar amounts. Um, then the third step is the four step process, and obviously lots and lots of details in it. Um, then the fourth step is actually the build process. And I used to think that actually out there swinging the hammer, that's the total scope of the work, but it's so much more than that. It's just one piece of it. 
Yeah. And then the last step is to move in and celebrate. What I've learned is that to have the client, actually, I also love like the story brand Donald Miller format where the the hero, the client is the hero with a problem. I'm not the hero in this conversation. If I make myself great, actually, we become competing heroes. Every story has a hero and then something doesn't fit. But um, so the client is the hero. You talk about them, they're hero with a problem. And I'm a guide that offers them a, um, what is it? A roadmap or a solution to avoid failure and end in success. So the four steps there. And then the other one I did is like all the budgeting and the formatting, which I call it my nine group budget process. I don't know if you want to see that or not, but there's the first one's planning site work. So it somewhat follows the um, order of it, but that's totally more um, dollar focused. And the other one is more date focused and um, job trade. I can't say enough good stuff about the budget and that it's better than I've anything I've ever seen. So I oh, appreciate it. I mean, you, you clearly have it all dialed in though. I mean, I, I can tell, you know, just your focus on kind of mapping out your processes. It's like you, you, you know what you need to do at any given moment because of where you're in, you know, these, these different processes that, that, that you've defined and the systems that you've set up. I mean, that's, that's exactly, uh, you know, how to do it. Uh, you know, and, and, and again, I, you know, these things don't come overnight. I, you know, I realize that and, you know, it sounds like you've, 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 you know, kind of gone through a lot of, you know, trials and, and, and revisions and, you know, kind of have had to sort of learn and adapt over time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious, what, what would you say, like when you're, when you're reflecting back on, you know, since you took over the business, I mean, like what have been the biggest challenges that, that, that you, your brother, your team have faced and, you know, how, how, how do you think that, you know, you've overcome them? So I would go back to the, in EOS, I don't know if you like my little papers or not, but this is called the Vision Traction Organizer. And actually, let me tell you a different story of the, there was a local company, like a $4 billion company. And at one time, their CEO talked at our local like um, Chamber of Commerce event they put on. And he said at one time, about 10 years ago, he it was such a bad culture that um, they, they gave the the employees jackets to wear and they refused to wear them in public. Hmm. And the way he turned that around is ironic. It's the very first thing that it talks about here. And you know what that is? That is called core values. So what I would talk about to your answer, the, the challenges, that is it doesn't matter um, what challenges come along. It, it starts with a mindset and core values, which is getting the right people on board. And so if I hire somebody, that's the first thing they asked. And actually, the um, one of the friends I was talking about, about employees and stuff, so he's, there's a question. Should we keep them or not? So he said, well, get out your core values once. Integrity, adaptive, respectful, growth, and abundance. Does he have integrity? Uh, we're in, which is we're integrity-focused leaders. Adaptive, we're efficient and adaptive. Is he, is he adaptive? Is he respectful, honest, respectful? And growth, is, is, does he have a growth mindset? Does he have a forward-facing culture of respect and abundance? So what I would say that any challenges that come along, if you have core values, go back to them. And then, of course, you got to live them out yourself as a leader. And actually, that's what he told his team there, too. And that's how he turned it around. That's, does this guy, a $4 billion company, came out. And then one hour that he talked there, that's the whole topic of what he talked about to turn his company around is the core values. And and slowly switching out leaders that don't line up with them and holding yourself to them. Um, well, if every problem that comes along to, well, we're all framers. Most of us are framers. If there's a problem, you reframe it. So a problem is not a problem. It's an opportunity. And, it, and this is what my friend also taught me and said, um, no matter what happens, is say you get stuck in traffic is you turn that around, you say, this is the best thing that has happened to me. And here's what happens and what I've learned. It doesn't necessarily make a bad situation good, but it does not get your brain stuck in a negative mindset. It gets you stuck in, well, this way is stuck. It didn't work this way. Let's try this other opportunity. Start to see the other opportunities and there's multiple ways to get there. It can be done. Yeah, no, that's, that's great advice. I mean, I, I, I think it sounds like you you did a great job identifying those core values, the things that you believe in, and then you, you even use that as a framework to to decide if you know future employees are are a good fit for you, and that's how you ensure 
that you're bringing people on that are going to be a good fit with the company, the culture, you know, they share those same values. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in, uh, you know, the, you know, if, uh, if, if, if you've ever read, uh, um, you know, what, what was it, uh, uh, John a blank here, the, uh, to, to Carl, uh, not Carl Sewell, uh, getting the right people on the bus, the wrong people off the bus and, uh, the right people in the right or... seats. Yeah. Good to great. Jim Collins there. No, you no. Know, it, it's, it's so important that, you know, you, you start with making sure you've built the right team. You know, I see a lot of people who, you know, they, they're, they're, they're just, they're, they go at it alone for a long time. And then, you know, they, they finally get overwhelmed and realize that they need to bring somebody else on, but then, you know, they don't, they don't take the time to find that right person. And they're just, they're so, you know, it's like desperate to, to, to bring someone in to fill a seat that they just take the first person that comes along. And, and it's like, man, like you got to, you know, you know, really take your time, you know, vetting these people and make sure that they're a good fit for you. Because, you know, at the end of the day, like you want to be able to, you know, wholeheartedly trust them in whatever, you know, role and capacity they're, they're coming on there. Uh, and so it seems like, you know, your, your core value framework is, is a great, you know, great tool that you can always revert back to whenever you need. Yep. And one thing, one thing that I would add to that is, is everybody you meet is not going to be a hundred percent perfect on, on, on every one of them. But the key difference for me is let's say that, uh, let's say that we have honest and respectful communications. Let's say one guy is gossiping about it or somebody else. So if you bring it there and say, hey, we're honest and it's a problem, and the key difference whether they stay on board or not is if they say, yeah, number one, acknowledge it. We're striving for something better. All right, we'll, we'll strive for it. It's not that like one strike and you're out, because then everybody would be gone, but it's yeah. this is what we're striving for. Um, I like more of the, there's different styles of leadership. There's a firefighter mode where it's John on the ladder. It's not, well, I don't feel like, it. no, you do this, you do that. And there's that style. But then there's also inspirational leadership. And actually that was a great thing that uh, we, it was the end of the year. So I was thinking more, let's bring the team members in and let's say, how are you performing this year? Here you need to improve this and that. But my friends said, Andy, you're trying to do too much. Just bring them in, just talk about their hopes and dreams. What do they want to do? So we said, okay. And if you get people's hearts, get their why in it, then all the rest of that stuff will follow. Hmm. Uh, so that's what we did. And it's definitely a better way of doing it is the more of an inspirational, here's a painting that next picture. Here's what that could look like. And sure. Um, what can you tell us a little more about kind of like from a, you know, from a, a, a cultural standpoint, you know, what do you, what do you do to, to regularly engage with your team? You know, do, do you also do some more things with, with your trade partners? Like kind of what, what does that, you know, kind of that ongoing, uh, you know, involvement look like for, for someone who's working for you? Sure. So the, so it obviously happens on a day-to-day -day level of like me and my brother on a leadership level. Sometimes we do like a morning walk and talk. We just go for like a five minute walk to just to kind of check in ourselves, or I do my own check-in or then uh, we do, we do it at a, uh, like a daily management huddle at the office. And uh, so it seeps through everything down there and about once. Every two weeks or so, we have a company breakfast. Instead of going to the restaurant, we actually just have it catered to our conference room, and then we have our own private. Uh, and then there we go, go around in the circle there. One thing I'm just actually I'm just hiring somebody right now. We're doing is called a personal professional plan (PPP). And this, the guy that I talked about earlier, the the local, the four billion dollar company. That's why one of the things they did to uh, turn their company around is. Um, and we assigned one of the older guys who used to be a coach at the high school said, and I told him like at the, it's one of the first interviews, Hey, you talk to him and bring him bo on board. And it's your job to help walk with him as a personal professional plan to where are you going outside of layman construction? I mean, well, we're here for a little bit, but uh, what, how can we make you successful? And if you, if your team wins, they're going to be happier and you're going to win, yeah. but it's definitely a win-win. So, um, then as far as our trade partners, we call them trade partners, not subs because they they truly are a partner and we are depend on them to give us accurate bids to call out stuff that we missed and, um, not just here's my role and aha, watch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's. 
some of this stuff we do. Yeah, I mean, so, sounds like you'd be, uh, you know, awesome company, awesome boss to work for. I mean, have you have you had a, a, any uh, any any need to, I guess, kind of, you know, deal with a, a tougher situation where, you know, somebody just, you know, made some 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 grave mistake or error? Or, you know, have you ever had to let anyone go? I'm just curious, how do you kind of handle like the 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 situations where you need to, you know, hold them accountable, need 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 to reprimand or something like that? Um. Well, I guess I have my moments. Let's put it that way, where it looks like it's going great. And um, it is, that's a good question. We probably should be a lot harder on saying, and, um, here's our standard, you're out. But we're a smaller company, so it hasn't necessarily done a lot of that. Um, in a way, back when my dad would have had one employee, there was a time when he let him go. Says you, I'm gonna go talk to my lawyer. <laughs> but recently, by focusing more on the company culture, leading with the vision, saying, and talking, bringing a team member in, said, "Hey, here's where we're going. How can we make you successful?" And if it would, be, uh, if a situation like that would come up, I would more focus on, "Hey, here's where we're going. How can we make you successful?" And very likely, um, if they're not doing their job, if they're not performing, they're not in a, in a role that they like to do. Um, and then you help them either in our company or somewhere else. And I am excited to see that you can live with abundance. You don't have to leave on bad terms. You can have a friendly exit or a, or another book I love is called necessary endings, which that's about pruning your life and uh, getting rid of stuff for distractions. But, um, and then just keeping that mindset, keeping at it. And yeah, we have, about, it seems like once every 10 years, I remember my dad had a client that didn't get vetted out quick enough. And uh, we've had one of those as well. And the key thing that I would have wish I would have asked, and that is, have you built before? Innocent mm -hmm. little question, but it's a black and white or the response, how busy I am. Um, if they start going off about their previous contractor, my schedule is, looks like it's going to be very full and mm -hmm. I'll probably have to pass on the job. And if it's, no, I've even had it, had it where I said, well, maybe there are some bad contractors and the client really did not want over, but I just recently had that is, and it's not, it holds true. Yeah. Don't say, yeah. Uh, are there any, negative, any, yeah. Are, are there any other, uh, you know, kind of red flags, if you will, that, that you're looking for to, you know, obviously it's better to, 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 to not take the job than to have to, you know, to have to, to fire a client in the middle of one. I mean, what, what other kind of, you know, like, are there other kind of th signs that you're looking for? Or do, or do you have like a, a target, you know, customer profile that, you know, that, that, that you hope that they, they fit the, fit the mold before you decide to take on a client? Um, so I guess my response to that would be make me think of the importance of having boundaries and knowing where we're targeting. And, Instead of saying this person's negative or anything, the key word I like to use is I wish I could help them. And I just recently had that with about an hour away, a guy um, called me, wanted a little garage built, and I generally wished I could help you. But it's out of our, now if it's a new house, we might go that far, but uh, with a little garage addition, I wish I could help you. And then I just said, well, what is, how could I help you? How could you refer? And then I helped him. Well, what you might do is you might try um, uh, try calling the local lumber yard, and they might know of some crews. They have salesmen. Talk to them and see if there's another contractor that's a better fit for you there. Mm. Um, so uh, I come at it more from the mindset, I wish I could. Yeah. Uh, so so friends asking for money or whatever it is, that's a good, well, I wish I could. but For sure. I'm curious, do you and your brother, uh, do, do, do you ever uh, kind of have difference of opinions? And how do you uh, how do you hash that out if it's, uh, you know, just just you two at the top? Um, so my brother-in-law, the majority owner, he is more of a low-key personality type. And we, we've used the different personality profiles from DISC or Colby is the newest one, which is um, what I really like about that is you put your Colby scores into like a chat gpt or copilot any of those you say okay based on these colby scores so i'm a more of a slow fact finder and he's a lot more of a high fact finder he wants more details then i realized oh 
while he's asking all the detailed questions, I I don't need a lot of details and he's better at like project management. You need those details. Um, and just to understand it, but yeah, as the saying goes, well, this is more on marriage, but before marriage, opposites attract. After marriage, opposites attack. We're kind of <laughs> the same way. We're opposite and it's good, but then all of a sudden we get into it. Um, but the one great thing is that and we have already gone home mad, and but it's been a decade plus that we've worked together and I have the confidence that, well, we'll figure it out. Uh, no. And then by the next day, in fact, his his wife, funny his story, his wife, when she first got into our family, she's like, man, you guys are fighting all the time. Like, when? We're just having a discussion. Just <laughs> iron sharpens iron. <laughs> there you go. But it is, it is something to consider that um, you have to watch for that. And, yeah. And obviously. Velvet, velvet hammer. Huh? Yeah. You know, uh, you, you certainly kind of know that you're taking a little bit more of a risk when, when you mix business and family. Um, yeah. But, you know, when you can make it work, I mean, I, I, I wholeheartedly believe it's it's a really great opportunity. I mean, my, my dad is our CFO here. So, you know, I get the get the opportunity to work with him every single day. And, you know, I think that 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 gives me that much more, you know, fulfillment in, in, in what I'm doing because I have that opportunity. And, you know, obviously we don't we don't get along with everything. And, you know, I don't know, I like to describe it, it used to be like the 80 20 rule. Now it's more like the 95 five or even, you know, 98 two. you know, we're we're, we're we're at odds. But you know, it always, always, we can always come back to, you know, we're just, we, we have the utmost level of respect for each other. We can agree to disagree. We can, you know, we, we see things from different perspectives. And so, you know, I think as long as you have, you know, respect and, and then, you know, the, the willingness and the ability to communicate and not, you know, try to, try to go for the jugular every time, if you will, you know, it's, it's, it's a great, you know, it's, it's a great skill to have. And I, and I think just like you, you related it, you know, even back to marriage, I mean, you know, being able to to work through challenges with with anybody, you know, your spouse, you know, your business partner, you know, employees, whatever it is. I mean, at the end of the day, like communication is so important. And, you know, I, I think you just got to give people the, the the opportunity to to share from their perspective and, and recognize that, you know, you know, everyone is entitled to feel, you know, how, how they feel. And, you know, it's it's, you know, you might feel one way and I might feel another way. And, you know, we're, we're both right that we both feel that way. Now well, let's try to figure out, you know, where's where's the the the, the compromise or the, the the best answer. I mean, I, we have a saying here, you know, may, may the best idea always win, and you know, it's it's meant to 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 really represent that. Like, it doesn't matter who came up with the idea. It's let's just you know agree that we need to hash out, you know, whatever we need to hash out to hopefully find the best idea and move forward with that. And you know, I think that that served us us very well. Yeah, I would totally agree with that. And the thing I would add to that is, is whether a whether you're in a rough situation with a client, something got ordered wrong, or whatever it may be, or an employee, or a whatever relationship, you or you talk you talk about it, get the hard facts, but then at some point, so the forward facing or abundance, the the right the sentence that goes with this forward facing, the key word is forward facing. Is everybody look at most of the world is looking at back and problems talking to like problem speak. But as a leader, you have to recognize where we're at. Then you have to turn around and, and face forward and let it go. And tomorrow truly is a blank slate. Yeah. Like, and you can write in there whatever you want. And what I've learned is that um, if you ever don't know what to say, well, let's say, for example, the cabinets were ordered the wrong color. Then you talk about what happened, and then you're missed up. He said, she said, and said, okay, what does this look like? Let's get back to the, the the next vision. You want to live in here with your family. You want to have a good time. You want your kids, the memories that you make. What can we do? This is the situation we have. It's not ideal, and I yeah. take responsibility. What does it take to get there? How could we get there? And then everybody having that bigger vision, whether it's with your employees or your team or your marriage or your kids or whatever, um, that seems to seems to be a lot better strategy than just a he said she said. Yeah. I, I love the that. Let's let's turn it back to how do we move forward? You know what what can we do from here? You know moving forward to make it right to to get past this. Like you're right. I mean, so many times and and so many people just you know they 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 get hung up on this this finger pointing this blame game and it's like you just end up carrying this 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 baggage and these you know, these, these bad feelings and these grudges. And it's like, that doesn't help anybody. 
you know, you got to just get it off your chest. Let's, let's, you know, acknowledge, you know, here's what happened and we made a mistake. We're going to learn and we're going to move forward. You know, you, you don't, you know, every, every mistake doesn't need to be, you know, the, the hill that you, you know, you die on it's so let's, let's learn and, and, and we'll do better next time. And, you know, I, I hope that people can, you know, can, can, uh, can, can recognize when they may be the ones that have, you know, kind of, you know, just dug in and, you know, claiming this, this, this hill is the one to, 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 to go to bat for. And, you know, it, it just, it, it really oftentimes isn't, isn't a productive experience to, to try to just dwell on the, on the past. It's definitely a much, much better approach, like you're saying, to focus on the future and moving forward. Yeah. Makes me right along those lines. Makes me think of a client um, that I have right now, um, being truly caring about their success. Um, they they build a home that they're building a like a maker's retreat for, and so she needed to go to the bank and and get some documents. So it was a friend of mine. So I just wanted and I love doing it. So I helped them make a, a projected profit plan, and through all the income and X and I did the Excel slice and dice just in real time, which is easy for me, but I guess. It's not for some people, but then at the end, down at the bottom, I, like a little cash flow, here's what this and the equity says, so how much was this worth for you? Like 10% of that? Like, yeah, easily. Like this two hours, like you would have paid 6000 Yeah, more than that. Okay, last I remember, I was just a little kid just running around the farm. And how did I get to this position now as a CEO? I don't know, $1,500 an hour is my revenue responsibility for a Per hour, I'm helping clients there. Now I just, I don't know. Yes, probably what happened is I was working on the job one day and taking this, um, um, like a sofa down, renovating the house. The next thing I knew, my head was bleeding. The thing had fell down, hit me over the head. That's probably what did it at that point. Then something changed, and then now I'm just, no, I'm kidding. Awesome. But, well, look, I, I got, I got it. One more big question and, and sure. one other after that. I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm curious, what's, what's the, what's the bigger vision, you know, for, for you and for Lehman construction, where do you want to see the company in, in five, 10 years, kind of what's, what's, what's the goal? That is an excellent question. And here's what the attempt was to document it on here, the 10 year vision and so the, the the focus is not so much on top line revenue, more of a a small uh, healthy profit, fun to do job company. Um, but what I'm seeing with next generation coming on, you might need to expand. And as opportunities come up, um, there is a good nice company in Ohio called Schrock Premier uh, Schrock Premier Construction. So I just called them up one day and said, Hey. I heard good things about you. They were on the cover of Equipment World. That was another, it was an Amish company, but it was, they had three huge divisions and like a 300,000 square foot. So I called them up, hey, can we come visit? And so I said, sure. So we walked through their company and they had all different divisions. So if you want a big, bigger dream than I think is possible right now, why not go for that? Have a cabinet division, have an excavation division because we like our, the only thing that changed with our toys is the price tag. And, and then we have a construction division, but probably construction is going to be my main core. And I'm going to make sure that's the main core. If the other stuff adds on and there's different divisions, great. But um, I think the big dream. I think what I really heard you say is, you know, you, you want a, a, you know, financially healthy company, but you want to make sure that you're having fun, you're enjoying the journey and, and you get to keep, keep building this with, with your brother-in-law, your family, you know, it, 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 Sounds like you, you know, you've already really are, are living that uh, every day, and it's, uh, you know, it's 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 apparent you guys are doing very good work. You're you're very passionate about what you're doing. You know, I, I really respect, uh, you know, what what I've seen and 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 know about you and your company. You guys really are uh, doing a great job, and you know, I appreciate you being a good role model for for other contractors out there. You know, for for setting you know a great example for the industry as a whole. You know, as, as you opened up with my favorite quote, you know. Uh, a rising tide lifts all boats, and and I and I think that truly is what we need here is is more role models, more great examples of construction companies, you know, doing good and doing right by their clients, doing what they say, and uh, you know I think think you've done a great job at that. So my final question is what what advice would you have for for others who you know maybe earlier on in their journey, you know maybe they're 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 still one foot on the tools, one foot trying to start the business, like. You know, what advice would you have for them to, 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 you know, when they're really getting into starting their, their business up? 
So the, the simplest thing you can do is just find another contractor, another builder, and get that abundance mindset going. And if I would meet you at the uh, job tread, which I don't know if I'll be there because my kid, twins are going to be born this in November, but um, to know that they have an abundance mindset, my old self, would, why would they want to talk with me? I'm just a small, let me tell you, if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> and I just make, make small, I think there's a story of like the, forget what plant it is, but it's like it takes seven years and it's like that that tall one inch tall but then year eight it skyrockets so it's like a, a 20, 20 year overnight success or a 10 year overnight success make small uh, incremental steps and um get and do vendor orders that's the number one key vendor orders is the key most people don't do them but purchase orders vendor orders that's the key yeah Awesome, Ramsey. I, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing your story, your journey. You know, again, I, we we very much respect you know what you have built and continue to build, and I look forward to seeing a lot more success coming for you. You know, I, I certainly w- would love to have you at Job Tread Connect in January, so we'll have to uh, see see how that how that plays out. But you know, if if not, you know, congratulations on the twins and uh, and just all your success. You know, I, I I wish you all the best and look forward to seeing what you can do. Well, thank you. <laughs> it was great talking with you. Have a good one. Yep, we'll see you. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Builder Stories. We hope you enjoyed the conversation and gained valuable insights that can help you in your journey along the way. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and leave us a review. And as always, if you or someone you know has a story to share, please contact us at builderstories.com. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Eric Fortenberry, and remember, every builder has a unique story. Keep building yours.